What's going on everybody? Alex Pandrea here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another tutorial. Now if you follow my channel and you're up to date with all the stuff that I'm teaching, uh, you realize that I teach some stuff and you might have questions or two about, oh, how do I do this? How do I do it? How do I add to this tutorial? So this is one of the tutorials that you can take what I'm showing you today and add it to one of my previous tutorials and that is how to, forgot which one I'm doing today. And that is how to control four cards, selected cards, to the bottom of the deck so that you can do the four for four switch that I taught just a few videos back. Now a lot of people have watched that tutorial, enjoyed it, I hope, and then asked me, but how do I get the four cards to the bottom? Now I said a few ways of how you could possibly do it in the video, but I could be more concise than that. So that's what this video is going to teach you. Let's get four cards selected and control them to the bottom in a very nice way. All right, here we go with the explanation of the four. Oh, by the way, these are the new Super Nox. You might have seen it if you follow me on Instagram. By the way, the best way to follow all the new stuff that is happening is on my Instagram. Uh, but for those of you who want to get a sneak peek, well, obviously you're getting a sneak peek because this whole tutorial will be done with these cards. These are the new Super Nox. Now, you might know V1, which were based off of the Superman colors, the Superman vintage colors, and we also had a limited edition with this. This is no different. These are the Super Knock V2s, and these ones are obviously based off of the old Batman colors. Now, the cards themselves are very nice and usable. This is the most important thing when it comes to Knocks, a deck that you would use, abuse, love. These Super Knock V2s will be available on Sunday, September 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, only on houseofplayingcards.com. And yes, there is a limited version. This is the regular cards and the limited version will also be available in limited quantities all right so how are we going to take four cards lose them into the deck and then control them to the bottom now this in itself you don't need to go and watch my previous video because this is the first step of what that would have implied of taking four cards and switching them for four cards that were on the bottom. I will leave the link below if you do wanna watch that so that after you learn this, you can go ahead and take this one step further. But for now, we're gonna take out the four aces and just show you the control. Um, so let's take out the four aces for this case. One, two, three, and four, yep. And, uh, ooh, look at that. Now the four aces themselves could be any four of a kind or any four selections. So if you're doing a different type of routine where it's not finding the four aces, but rather finding four selected cards, um, then you can just apply it to that. But the technique is of course the same. The move itself is an old move. It's by Die Vernon, the one and only Die Vernon. And the technique is as follows. So we're gonna lose one, two, three, four aces into the pack and all I'm going to do is just shuffle just like this lost in the deck but of course we have complete control over them because all four aces are now on the bottom of the deck okay now what I like most about this control is the openness of it um, and sort of the style of like look I don't really care where they are and you have complete control of them because a lot of controls are like this Right, you have to actively get into a position to do a move, a shift, or whatever, even when it comes down to you know controlling cards and then all the four ones get placed onto the bottom. It is very structured, and this is one thing that I don't like so much about these type of controls, especially with the four cards, especially if you're with different spectators and you grab one from one and the one from the other and another one, and you just want to make it feel open and fair. So, how do we do this? So the first thing is you're going to want to know how to do a Hindu shuffle. Now, this is a shuffle that you might know. If not, here's a three second explanation. So first you're gonna start with it in dealer's grip and then you're gonna sort of lift it up so that the right hand takes hold of the cards. Middle finger here, thumb here, and you're just gonna strip off with the middle finger and thumb of the left hand, packets from the top, and move them to that hand, okay? Uh, some people do it like this, all right? But that I don't know any magic technique that uses that. I use this when I'm trying to act like a fool and make pretend I don't know anything. I actually do things left-handed. 
But in any case, don't do it like this. Do it like this, it's much more elegant and that's how we're gonna use it for this technique. So now we're going to take the four cards and place them into four different parts of the deck. So space them out a little bit and just keep room on top for maybe one fourth of the deck, okay? That's gonna be important because you're not gonna want to put this too far to the top, the last card, which is the topmost card, because you're gonna use the top portion for our advantage in doing this slight, okay? So when you are placing the four cards, whether you take them from the spectator or take them off the table, you're gonna place them one, two, three, and then the fourth one, kind of get in sort of near the third one and just leave a little bit of room on top. So in this case, I left about this much now what you're gonna wanna do is you don't want them, so first and foremost, you don't want them too far in the pack. You don't want them too far out either, but you just want them a good amount. So remember, don't push them in too much um, because that's gonna make this technique just a little bit harder. So now the way that we're gonna hold a deck, the position is as follows. It's basically a dealer's grip, all right, a dealer's position with the first finger extended out and just putting pressure, not really pushing it or anything like that, but just placing your finger here and that's going to be used to stop the cards from dropping as what's gonna happen is the top packet uh, the top for first few cards will get dropped on to the first finger and you want that there so that they don't go flying down, okay? So the technique is like this. You're here, these are, remember, not pushed in too much. Now we're gonna shake with the left hand and you're gonna shake just enough so that the top few cards fall onto the hand and nothing else is going to fall and you're gonna make sure that by putting a little pressure with the first finger up like this. Okay, that's gonna create a little pressure inside of here and make sure that no cards from in the middle go in between these cards. So push up a little bit, tilt down, okay, and get that first finger there so that doesn't happen. You have placed these cards on top of the first one but every single other one will be intact. So that's that first ace right there, that's the second ace, that's the third one, and that's the fourth one, and now every other card is the same. These are still sticking out, it's just these cards have moved now to this position, okay? Now from here, you're going to grip the cards as if you're going to do a Hindu shuffle, and guess what, we're, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna strip out everything that is out jogged this way, okay? And that will create the control. So from here, you're stripping out, and guess what, the four aces are now on the bottom. Strip out, this gets placed here, and now this doesn't matter, so you could just continue shuffling just like that, and then we have the four aces on the bottom, okay? So in performance, it should be like this. All right, everybody has cards. Go ahead, give me your cards, sir, ma'am, thank you so much. The third card, and you're gonna remember the fourth card, right? Different parts of the pack, everybody could agree to this, and look, I'll shuffle them into the pack. No idea where or when they are. Yes, yes. And they're like, when? And they're like, what? And that just distracts them even more. So it's really good. Um, you have the four cards controlled to the bottom and then from there, you can go into anything really that you want, you know? You can even just palm them off and then say, look, your cards disappeared. Produce them from each pocket. That's one thing that I do. So like I said, the video is down below of how you can take this further. Um, but I hope you take it to however you feel is comfortable for you. So that was the explanation of the tutorial. Tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, one more time from behind so you can get the best view possible. The four aces or four cards are chosen, and we're going to start by placing one near the bottom, two, and just riffling with the thumb like this, three, and then four, keeping a little bit of stack on top to be placed forward, okay? So maybe that's just perfect. Show the four cards, you could even spread at this point and then re-grip like this into dealer's grip. First finger is gonna put a little bit of pressure. As you move forward with the cards, 
the first few cards slide forward and drop just like this, all right? Now to steal it out, or rather control the cards, you're going to re-grip in this position, grab at the tip over here, okay? So you don't grab more cards, because you see sometimes a few cards just come back in. That's why I said don't push it in all the way. So grab at the tip right here, start stripping out, strip out more, and keep shuffling, and now you have controlled the four cards to the bottom. Bam. All right, guys, there you have it. That was the video, that was the tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Now I hope that you can put two things together and make a full routine out of it. Now that's super important when learning anything, right? You take a piece from here, you take a piece from there. A lot of the stuff that I'm showing you is not full-fledged out routines. One, because there's just no time on these short sort of YouTube videos to teach you everything that I would love to teach you. And then two, it's also about you, so I can't just tell you everything, what to do, and then you just go and mimic uh, basically what I do because that's not good for you, it's not good for me, that's not good for anybody, the whole magic community. It should be on basis of creativity and creating your own style, your own personality, and your own effects, right? So you are gonna want to go ahead, take pieces of everything that you learned from me, from other YouTubers, from anywhere that you get knowledge from, right? And then take those pieces, put them together, it's something that fits you, and go out and blow some minds with everything that you know. It's very important to know as much as you can because then you can start taking and uh, piecing things together on the fly and that's another thing that is very important especially when performing magic because you don't want to stick necessarily to a script. I'm gonna do A, B, then C uh, even though yes you can organize it that way sort of in your head so you're staying on top of things. It's always good to know a lot of things so that on the fly you can piece this one together with this one, make a whole new routine and customize it for the spectator that's also very important. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this little video and this little tidbit of knowledge here at the end. I feel like these things are important, so do go ahead, take your time with it, learn it correctly, and if you like the video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you very soon on the next video. Peace.